um, now let us calculate uh, fx the x component of force between two nanotrons particles. So, what we are trying to do is calculate fx x component of force between two Leonard Jones particles. This is a very similar problem of what we did uh, previously, where we wanted to calculate effects between two ionic particles, uh, which we said the Coulomb particles. So, here uh, when I said two Leonard Jones particles, that means the particles they follow the Leonard Jones potential when they interact with each other. So, when you want to calculate effects, essentially what you have to calculate is gradient of potential with respect to the x component and this is nothing but minus del u del r and del r del x. Now, my u as the question said uh, is described by Leonard Jones potential. So, my u between two particles could be 4 epsilon sigma by r to the power 12 the repulsive term and then you have the attractive term sigma by r to the power 6. Here r i r is basically the r i j the uh, interparticle distance. So, from here we want to calculate uh, del u del r. So, this is nothing but uh, let me just simplify a little bit. So, this is sigma to the power 12 which is a constant and this is a variable minus sigma 6 is again a constant where sigma is the diameter. And now I want to calculate del u del r. So, if you differentiate u with respect to r, what will you get is 4 epsilon is the constant term. So, it stays there and when you uh, take the derivative with respect to r, so r to the power 12. So, you get minus 12 your sigma to the power 12 remains here and then you get r to the power 13. Likewise here you have a minus and then r to the power 6 gives you minus 6 that becomes 6. You have sigma to the power 6 there and it becomes r to the power 7. That's your derivative. And what is del r del x? r is nothing but x square plus y square plus z square to the power half. That is your r. So your del r del x would be 2x and then uh, uh, del r del x. Okay, so you have half here. So you have half 2x and then you have x square plus y square plus z square to the power minus half and that leads to x divided by r. So, therefore, that leads your x component of force is equal to uh, 4 epsilon. Um, here have a minus here, and here I am taking 1 minus out. So, that gives me 12 sigma to the power. 12 divided by to the power 13 
minus 6 sigma to the power 6 r to the power 7. So, that minus minus gives me plus and then I had x by r from del r del x. So, if you rewrite what you can write this expression as 4 epsilon uh, x. So, if you take 1 by r out you can write x by r square x by r square and then you have 12 sigma by r to the power 12 minus 6 sigma by r to the power 6. Let us see if we got it correct. 4 epsilon 12 by x r square similar to the power 12 minus 6 x by r square x by sigma by r to the power 6. So, that is your x component of force between two Leonard Jones particles. Likewise, you can calculate the force uh, uh, between two interacting particles along the y direction, along the z direction and so on. So, now the question is what is the relevance? What is the relevance of calculating the x component of force between the Leonard Jones particles or between the Coulomb particles? Uh, that is because if you recall uh, how we propagate um, our system in molecular dynamics uh, is that we make use of two important equations, expressions and those are RT is equal to R0 plus V0T where RT is my new set of coordinates, R0 is my coordinates uh, where we started from, V0 is the initial set of velocities for the particles, right particles and then we had half uh, A V square, uh, so sorry half A uh, T square, half A T square. and then we had so this was equation number 1 and we had the other expression a is equal to minus 1 by m del u del r that is my equation number 2. So, these two are the uh, primary equations in my molecular dynamic simulations. Our ultimate goal is to get rt which is nothing but a set of x, y and z i coordinates and that uh, they basically define the uh, location of each atom in your system and when you put up all these atoms together then you see your whole system. So, our ultimate goal is to get x, y, z uh, coordinates for uh, each of the ith particle and for that we need to get the x, y, z components uh, of A and to get that x, y, z component of A you need to calculate force along x, y or z direction. So, you need to calculate these um, force components during your calculations and those will give you the acceleration and that when you feed in equation number 1 you get this new set of coordinates uh, which uh, give you a new microstate or a new conformation of your uh, biomolecule of interest. So, that was the relevance of calculating the force component. Okay, uh, so, the next thing what we will be looking at is um, is something uh, where uh, we can calculate where we can often different microstates of a system by another uh, computer simulation method. So, if you recall why we introduced MD in our discussion 
is that uh, we know that ensemble is comprised of a uh, lot many microstates and so those microstates are basically giving the microstructure of our system and to generate the microstructure uh, in a large number of my system of interest we introduced molecular dynamic simulation and this technique basically given us uh, given us uh, the clue how to generate uh, different new conformations or different new microstructure of my system of interest.